Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. Uh, we want to continue tonight. Uh, I've, I've had some uh, interesting comments going on the uh, Cannabis Corner since our last uh, video. And uh, we have a uh, one group that uh, has been talking about uh, industrial hemp. And um, I think this is one of the issues that wasn't stressed enough in these latest uh, marijuana votes and stuff that were going on in Colorado and Washington. Now, Oregon did, uh, in their in their presentation and all, they were stressing the importance of the hemp and getting the hemp industry going and all, because this really is where the gold mine lies if you look at the amount of tax revenue that can be generated. Uh, the the current revenues and there's all these projections that are being done by these counties and commissioners and things like that these are based on this cartel price right now for the cannabis and i promise you as legalization continues state to state and people are allowed to produce their own and all supply and demand will take over and this price will go away i mean it's 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 far reaching unreasonable anyway and it has been for a long long time but so but but what shatters all of that, and we know this from statistics, we know this from, from back in the ancient times when they were growing hemp with very simple methods and all. We know for a fact that today, with today's technology and the amount of equipment and, and know-how that we have today, that the hemp production and the amount of products and fuel that could be generated from it is unbelievable. And the sales tax revenue on these products alone will triple to quadruple any taxation and revenues that are going to be generated through this current uh, taxation program that they've got going in Colorado and Washington now on the legal cannabis. And that doesn't, and that even, that's even if you keep this cartel price, the amount of money that's going to be made and all on that is a small drop in the bucket compared to the revenues that we would see from the fuel and the fiber and all the various products that we can make from the hemp plant that we already know about. And um, I think that this is where we're, we're really missing the boat here. We, you know, we're so concerned about, you know, trying to tell people they can't use cannabis when we know it's one of the safest uh, herbs out there on the planet. It, it has never killed anybody. So we, but we continue to allow this government and, and this oppression and this control to tell us that that we need to be monitored and, and even these places where they are going to be allowed to, to grow cannabis to sell and all, they're going to be under such scrutiny and cameras on. This is not a, this isn't a legal situation. This isn't a, a, a plant. You haven't made this plant legal by any stretch of the imagination. And I think that's really what's missing here. And if, if people really grasp hold of the fact that this hemp plant is really where the reven, true revenues lie. I mean, the, the amount of, you know, the amount of cannabis that the entire country could smoke in a given amount of time, you know, you, you're not talking about a lot of revenue based on what uh, is in comparison to the hemp plant when you start looking at all the products and stuff like that that will be generated from it. And, and of course, you know, there's 50,000 different products you can make. Anything you can make out of hydrocarbon from oil you can make with the hemp plant, the cellulose herds and, and the, uh, the fibers, of course, you know, make a lot of different things like ropes and clothing and stuff like that. But these products, I mean, they're, they're endless. I mean, they, they go on and on and on. And, and a lot of this oil that we import from these foreign countries and all that we're just, this money's just leaving our economy and all, this could stay in the economy here and, and not only help support the farmers, of course, they, they're gonna benefit because they'll have a crop they can sell. But uh, one of the biggest products that you can get from it is the fuel. I mean, if we, if we replace just our oil that we bring into this country, we'll be putting about a trillion dollars a year into our economy just from the fuel sales off of the hemp fields. And they're, they're estimated uh, that at, at around 30 barrels per acre of hemp. Now, this is uh, made from squeezing the seed and stuff. There really haven't been any records uh, even made or attempted on making the fuel not only from the, the oils containing the leaves and the flowers, but the stalks and all that. And this can all be done. This, this has already been done. It's not, this isn't new science or anything. This is old science. It's just never, the publications and the data and all is, is very scarce and all, but with our current technology and our, you know, the smart people that we have working and certainly the desire of America to have a new industry and to, and to get things going and all, 
the you know the making of our own fuel and then designing engines and stuff that that burn this fuel this is something we can grow and repeatedly grow year after year and as we grow it we improve the farmland that we're growing it on not to mention all of the the healthy products for the food and different things like that that can be generated from it so if you if you look at this plant from top to bottom i mean when we when we start thinking about the fact that we can replace all of our fuel that we you know, buy from foreign lands through the purchase of this <clears throat> amount of oil we buy every day here in this country from the Arabs and all the different producers around the world. If we could replace that and put that trillion dollars into our economy, there wouldn't be anybody out in America that would be looking for a job. And we certainly would, be, would begin to put a tremendous dent into our, uh, our debt and, and also the, you know, the deficit reduction and all. It's, uh, it's something that this country has got to get a hold of and this is an industry that's waiting to happen i mean we have the, the just from the paper the fiber and the fuel and the food alone just just those four or five products alone if we if we just <laughs> went after them the the amount of revenue and the taxation that would be generated would be sky high and so there there is some issues in this country, particularly when we, when everything's being held up by this, you know, can we smoke pot or not? And, you know, I, I, I can honestly tell you, I've been smoking cannabis every day for 45 years. I mean, uh, I've never had any point during that entire time where I felt like I was going to die, was near death, or felt like I couldn't function or, or wasn't, you know, uh, enlightened or, you know, just all of this, these lies and this this propaganda that's out there that America has chewed onto for so long and just bit hook, line, and sinker. I mean, back in the, you know, the mid 60s to the late 60s during the start of the hippie movement and all, and when cannabis smoking really started becoming popular again and all, the, the, the scene back then was one of peace and love. It wasn't one of this, this violence and this, this, all this hatred and, and this, of course, this, pitting our government against us through the Drug Enforcement Agency and, and the Controlled Substance Act and all. That wasn't the original purpose of any of all that. And all the reason people sit around and, and, and like to smoke cannabis and all is because they were sharing it with their friends. It was, it was an expression of love. It was, a, it was an empowerment of a natural plant. I mean, environmentally, I mean, everything about it was just, uh, it was so, so pure compared to how they've bastardized it today. But I hope that you out there that, of course you that use cannabis and all, we don't have to preach too hard to you, but those of you that haven't, you really need to look at the fact that the number of people like myself, and there's millions of us that have smoked cannabis for a long, long time. We haven't developed any illnesses from it. I think it's one of those that, it's like, it's like a lot of the herbs that I use, they're preventive maintenance. They'll keep you from getting sick. And true, they have a lot of medicinal properties, and, and if you have a medicinal anomaly or something, then the cannabis helps you for that. By God, you should be allowed to use it, and you shouldn't have to go to a doctor to get it. You should be allowed to grow it yourself, or get it from a friend, or however you can get it. But this whole thing, this regulation, this control, and all this with this new legal marijuana and all that they're doing, it, it just doesn't sound very legal to me. And, and if we really open our eyes up, and see that you know the, this hemp plant is is really the answer to to revenues if that's what y'all want to do. And, and this this doesn't have to be based on a cartel revenue. This can be based on just the normal sales tax that's already in place for all other products. There's not a special you know sales tax of 25% for alcohol or any of those kind of products that they're trying to levy against cannabis to raise all these revenues and and then that at the cartel price. So. A lot of thought needs to be going into this and and the purest the safest the best way and really to make the economy to make it work for our economy is to make it outright legal if somebody has enough land and they want to cover every square inch of it with pot plants if they want to s smoke it till they're blue in the face that's their right and there shouldn't be any law or any government entity or anybody that can say otherwise and so this Let's please, folks, let's, you know, we've, we've got our foot in the door to making people start and open their eyes a little bit now, but let's, let's really use common sense here. And, and we know that this herb is very safe and, and 
and we're just letting this gold mine of the hemp industry just sit there and and these other countries around the world they're not gonna they're not stupid like us they're gonna they're gonna develop it and they're already doing it they're making products right now and we're hung up on you know our children getting a hold of marijuana so wake up America you know let's let's start this new year that is if we all survive uh, today since today is going to be the end of the world supposedly according to the Mayan calendars but uh, if we all do survive that and we do make it through the holidays and all that and and I wish all of you a happy new year if we don't get to see you till then but be safe uh, keep the fight going and more than anything spend some time with your family because uh, in the long run and as you get older like me you'll find out that your family is the only thing that's important and thank you all for joining the cannabis corner and happy holidays to you and i would like to put on my ceremonial christmas hat and wish all of you a merry christmas and happy new year from the cannabis corner thank you <laughs>